roll, please. Thank you go. to our oldest son. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> Hugs. Hugs. <laughs> Hugs. We, we should, uh... Ooh. Don't drop it, don't drop it. What are you doing? I've got to open this part. There you go, there you go, there you go. Ta-da! <laughs> oh my goodness, this is so great. <laughs> it's not that heavy. I think I can I know, they it. said it wasn't. Okay. So now we got to get to the pants so that we I don't get, cut off any I legs. i got to get the pants so the legs don't get cut off. Look at that. Gotta how get... about if we learn how to use it? Oh, yay. There are the directions and the tools. Okay. And I know we have to be able to sharpen the blades so we make the... Yeah. There's a quick start guide. Okay. Okay. So, quick story, if you weren't on yesterday and, and saw our live, um, our son sent us this uh, kind of a negotiation I did with him, and bless his heart, he just gave it to us, and we're so very grateful for it. We needed to get ready for uh, winter, and you know, we have an abundance of grasshoppers, and I don't know if you know the story of the grasshopper and the ants. This has nothing to do with grasshoppers, does it? I don't, I'm not getting this connection. So, yes, it does. So okay, I'm listening. There's the story of the grasshopper and the ants, and the ants are busy, 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 working, getting their house ready for the winter, doing everything, collecting all the food, bringing it down. You see all these busy, busy ants, and here's the grasshopper sitting on the blade of grass going not doing anything and the ants are saying you got to get ready you got to get ready and they're going anyway bottom line is winter comes the ants are warm and cozy with all the food that they've stored the grasshoppers are cold they haven't stored anything there's no firewood ready to keep them warm and they're knocking on the ants door well, I think of this every time I walk through my field because I walk through thousands of grasshoppers and I'm like, I know, I feel like a grasshopper not getting my firewood ready. But now an ant just knocked on our door and gave us the supplies to be able yep. to do it. So we can, we can jump in and make it happen. We have so much to be grateful for. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It's really going to work on my arms. Come here. Build me up. Luckily, it's not that heavy. But for the kind of wood we have to do, this is perfect. This is perfect. This is awesome. Lots of firewood for the winter. We are going to keep plenty warm. This is one way that we have chosen to make a garden. We've got a lot of different gardens on our property, and this is one way. So we've done it with uh, landscaping timbers and concrete blocks. We have had research on the concrete blocks that they're made out of concrete and not cinder blocks. And we've got several layers underneath here. So we've got... What's this fabric? This is a landscape fabric that is not the best. We want to use a little bit stronger, but this is what we were able to get right now. So it's keeping the dirt in. It is. And underneath Because it's staple to the timbers. Correct. And then down under the dirt. Underneath we have um, wood, wood um, from trees, limbs, different things like that. And then we have uh, peat moss and compost and dirt and then more layers of uh, compost and more layers of dirt. And then we've put in the organic fertilizer that we made this morning or that, that will show um, and, and it's a, it's a organic fertilizer that is from Steve Solomon, who was the creator of Territorial Seeds. And, um, and the writer of Gardening West of the Cascades. Correct. We did show how to make this in our 12 Days to Hardiness. 
and we're sharing this video on this video on both 12 days to hardiness and on our YouTube channel. So we've got a lot of different layers in here and the fertilizer was put on the top and then mixed in. And then Jim has made this nifty... Can I explain it? Please. We're, we're doing a couple of things with this you take drip my seat. system. Uh, the first thing that I did is, this is a small garden and it's probably overkill, but I've ran uh, the, the stronger tube all the way around the perimeter and connected it so it, it makes a complete loop. And then between each end I've ran drip tape so it's fastened at both ends. But by having it all the way around and then the drip tape connected at both ends, it equalizes the pressure through the drip tape so you get an even drip. I, I, I know there's always the question of, you know, it, is the drip at the end of the tape going to get as much as, as the uh, drip in, at the beginning of the tape. So this takes away those possibilities and with it being 8 foot and being a low pressure system like it is, uh, the drips are very even. So next what we will do is put more fabric over the top. We're going to cover this with fabric. And then we're going to cut holes in it and plant our beans so that they come through. We want the cover to be over our vegetables and over the dirt to help suppress the weeds and to help suppress the bugs and underneath oh, over the water, right? Yes. Yes, what we're learning about Missouri is there are lots of pests and there's lots of weeds. So um, where we get enough water to keep things wet, it's better if we regulate the amount of water and then protecting against the pests and the weeds as much as we can increases what the plants have to work with. So they're, they're not having the pressures from weeds and pests as badly. Let's just control what we're doing as we put okay. it down. One of the reasons that we've chosen to use the drip tape instead of sprinkling is so that we don't get rust on the leaves and so that it is also more controlled watering and it's going to be on a timer so it can just go without us even being here and so we're excited to try this. The thing about homesteading is you just keep trying new stuff. Especially when you're in a different environment, different climate, uh, you, you've got to do what is going to work there. And we think we got it on this. Yesterday we went to an Amish store and we bought jade green beans and that is what we're planting and we are going to give it a shot in our fall garden. Which is what? We have the bed covered. We've got holes in it. We've got them right next to the drips. And now we're ready to plant the green beans. We just got back from our walk and look what we found. We didn't notice it on the way out. We this picking up here when I was walking. This was not here two days ago because we looked. So really, really great um, germination rate. So we need to add one to here. That one is coming up. That one's coming up. Add one to here. One, two, three. This one's not. Four. I don't think this one is. Five. Uh, six. Yeah. Maybe add six more beans in. Good germination rate. I'm oh, this is beans. wonderful. So it's going to be time now for us to yep, put the It's time the to put the hoops on. So yeah. we will show how to do that on an upcoming video. Isn't this marvelous? I didn't know if they'd find their way out, and they found their way out. They found it. That's so great. I also would like you to see one of the prettiest parsley plants I think I've ever seen. It's gorgeous. And just this is our great big, what used to be our 
our keyhole garden and you'll see wire sticking up to the top. We took all the posts out, but we don't dare take that wire out. But it's just giant compared with what it was. Our sweet potatoes. End of another fantastic day. A lot done today. The list remains though of things that need to be done. I'm ready to call it a day. The chickens aren't. They're still out and about. Kind of tough to get them to get back in until it's dark, so I have to wait till it's dark. And because I have been out and about, oh, there's little Henny Penny. She's not ready to go back in yet, but she's been following me everywhere. Um, everywhere I go, she's right behind me, so she's becoming a pet. Um, but I'm not getting attached, I promise. So, anyway, I been out laying on the ground things that I was working on out with the pigs chickens all kinds of places I'm sure I've picked up some some chiggers who knows maybe even ticks so yeah clothes come off go into the laundry and shower time before I go to bed because I don't want to take these critters to bed with me Brenda doesn't like when that happens they like to bite her more than they like to bite me so I've got to take care of her in that regard um, the pig paddock is working out great. The pigs are really enjoying it. Uh, let me kind of pan out there to them. Let you see what the, they're doing. Uh, fed them a little bit ago and they're still working that over. They, unlike the other paddocks where they really didn't fully use them, this one's a lot larger and they're using quite a bit of it. So they're really learning to get out and forage more. So that's really what we wanted to see but they still love for us to feed them. So, uh, I'm it's gonna get a little darker. I'll be able to get the chickens in. I'll be able to then go shower and call it the end of a day. We, it's Friday, wanna do some relaxing and hopefully there'll be some time to do that before bedtime. But thanks for watching. It's great to have you being part of this journey that we're making couple of reminders um, so the 12 weeks to hardiness is still going on it's going great in fact a little bit of announcement we have been running it off of our website and we're going to be we're in the process of moving everything over to a teaching platform it's going to be a lot better presentation a lot better flow of how things look and feel and work uh, that's yet to come so those of you who are using it right now you can look for a change in I won't say the near future but eventually I don't know how long it's going to take us to get everything moved over and in place but for those of you who haven't been part of it you're going to see some differences in the invitation but certainly it's going great lots of people involved in it we're getting good feedback for, for those who are really making some use of it uh, about changes that they're experiencing and you need to hear from everybody that would be great to know how well it's working for them but if you haven't done it and you're interested in doing it, it's still there uh, the links are down below you can find them down there you can go to there and as always if you haven't subscribed to our newsletter that's a great place to be updated on specifics of what's going on seeing some of the blogs that we're putting together some of the material that you may not see in the videos we're talking about there so go to the website and sign up for that so you can get the newsletter. But as always, it's great to have you along with for this ride that we're making as we put this homestead together. We're having a blast. It's a lot of work. Sometimes a little stressful. We're working on that. But we enjoy it and we enjoy sharing it with you. Take care.